in this session we will be discussing about the force experienced by a charged particle inside a magnetic field. So, if the charged particle is at rest then it will not experience any force due to the magnetic field, but it can certainly experience the force due to the electric field. If the charged particle is positive it will experience the force in the direction of the field if it is negative it will experience the force opposite to the field. But if it is a magnetic field then it will only experience the force if it has got some velocity. So, if you want to know the formula for writing the force experienced by the charged particle in a magnetic field it is q v cross b where v stands for the velocity of the charged particle q for the charge and b for the magnetic field. Now, it is v cross b. So, the meaning of this v cross b is magnitude of v into magnitude of b into sin of the angle theta between v and b. This is how you can write the magnitude of v cross b. You should also remember that cross product is a vector quantity and there is some direction associated with the answer. So, q v cross b is a vector quantity and the magnitude of that as I said is q v b sin theta where theta is the angle between v and b. So, what you should understand here is though the charged particle has got a velocity and though there is the presence of a magnetic field the force can still be 0 provided the velocity is either parallel to the magnetic field or opposite to the magnetic field. Because in that case the angle between velocity and magnetic field will be either 0 or 180 degree and sin of 0 is also 0 sin of 180 is also 0. So, if there is no velocity then there is no force that is I think very easy to follow. If there is no magnetic field then there is no force that you are talking about. But even if there is velocity as well as magnetic field the force can still be 0 is the point to be remembered fine ok. Now, by the rules of the cross product v cross b should have a direction which is perpendicular to v also and perpendicular to b also. This makes you immediately understand that the motion is going to be circular provided the force is perpendicular to the velocity all the while because I think that is that is the condition for circular motion. The centripetal force that you had seen in the circular motion was always perpendicular to the velocity. So, q v cross b gives a force which is perpendicular to the velocity and makes the charged particle undergo circular motion. And as you remember centripetal force is a must for circular motion to happen and so q v b sin theta can be equated to m v square by r where v is the velocity again and r is the radius of the circular path described by the particle. Now, if you take a special case wherein sin theta becomes 1 then the force would be maximum that is when the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field the force experienced by the charged particle would be maximum and of course, the motion is going to be circular and the radius can be given. So, r will be equal to m v by q b the radius of the circular path will be given by m v by q b. Now, if it is undergoing a circular motion you can always speak about the time taken by the charged particle to undergo circular motion and t can be given by 2 pi r by v 2 pi r is the circumference that the charged particle would cover during its one rotation and v would be the velocity. So, time period will be 2 pi r by q b. Now, if you replace that r as well as v then I think you can even find out that the time period is independent of the velocity. Now, superficially it appears that it is 2 pi r by v. So, you may feel that it depends on the velocity, but the moment you substitute for r as well as v you will realize that this time period that is the time taken by the charged particle to go uh, round the circle once it is independent of the velocity which happens to be like this. If you project the charged particle with a greater speed then it would undergo a circular motion with a bigger radius, but still take the same time as it would provided you had projected it, it with a lesser speed. Fine. So, with that background let me read the first problem and see what exactly uh, should be the solution. See if you look at this problem a wire of length L carrying a current I is bent into a circle the magnetic field at the center of the circle is ok. So, here he wants you to understand about the magnetic field which is going to be produced by a current carrying conductor. 
so far i was speaking about the force experienced by a charged particle in an already existing magnetic field but now we are referring to something where we want to produce the magnetic field and a current carrying conductor as you know always produces a magnetic field now he says there is a wire here and that is going to produce a magnetic field so the magnetic field produced at the center of the wire is given by the formula b equal to mu not i divided by 2r fine so here mu not is the proportionality constant i is the current that he has given r is the radius of that circular wire but he has not given you the radius he has given you the length so you can write this length as 2 pi r and find out the value of r as l divided by 2 pi and that makes b equal to mu not i divided by 2 l divided by 2 pi and that gives you the answer as 2 gets cancelled so it is mu not i pi divided by l and that makes the answer uh, 1 that is a a to be the correct option like the previous problem uh, this is also to find out the magnetic field produced by a wire carrying the current so let us read the problem and understand how has he really shaped the wire a part of a long wire carrying a current i is bent as shown find the field at the center o see now how has he really bent the wire matters because you should understand here that the wire has been taken like this to allow an anti clockwise current to flow through that circular part and then the wire again continues to be straight and do not forget that the wire is infinite that is this end of the wire will also go to infinity and this end will also go to infinity only in the middle i think he has allowed that wire to form a circular loop and because the current in the wire in the circular part is anti clockwise the direction of the magnetic field produced at the center of that loop should be out of the board perpendicular to the board because if you allow your fingers of the right hand to curl in the direction of the current thumb will always give you the direction of the magnetic field therefore it is out of the board perpendicular to the board and now this is a straight infinite wire therefore at a distance of r from the infinite straight wire the magnetic field is again out of the board perpendicular to the board it is out because if you hold that infinite wire carrying the current in your right hand like i have held my chalk thumb indicating the direction of the current then the curling fingers will give you the direction of the magnetic field produced therefore the magnetic field produced at the center o should be the sum of the field produced due to the straight wire as well as the field produced due to the circular wire so the net field at the point o can be written as 1 is mu not i divided by 2 r which is due to the circular portion where i have considered r to be the radius which is out of the board plus due to the straight wire which is mu not i divided by 2 pi r that is due to the straight infinite wire at a distance of r from the wire now if you sum these two mu not i divided by 2 r is common so that will be 1 plus 1 by pi and that makes it mu not i divided by 2 pi r where pi is the lcm into bracket pi plus 1 and that makes the option c as perfectly correct but that is only because the wire in the circular portion is carrying the current in the anti clockwise direction and it has added to the magnetic field due to the straight infinite wire also had it been clockwise then the answer would have been d please remember this so now the answer is c because both the fields are getting added up and therefore this option is perfectly correct that is c is correct now here is one more on finding the magnetic field but of course here he wants you to find out the magnetic field on the axis of the circular coil axis taken perpendicular to the plane of the coil see please remember we don't have any discussion 
of finding the magnetic field anywhere in the plane of the coil. We will always choose the axis perpendicular to the plane of the coil and we will pick up a point on the axis and write the magnetic field there. But here he wants I think a comparison to be made. Let us read the problem. The magnetic field at the center of the circular coil of radius r with current i is b. What is the magnetic field at x equal to root 3 r from the center on the axis? So, please remember that he has taken the axis at right angles to the plane of the coil and the point he has chosen is at a distance of x equal to root 3 r from the center. And he wants you to compare and find out the magnetic field uh, there. So, let us first write what exactly is the formula for the magnetic field on its axis. So, magnetic field on the axis of a circular wire at a distance x axis taken perpendicular to the plane of the coil is mu naught i r square divided by 2 into r square plus x square raised to 3 by 2. This is the formula where r is the radius and x is the distance. Of course, here you can check the what do you say correctness of this particular formula by putting x equal to 0. It will reduce to mu naught i r square divided by 2 r square raised to 3 by 2 which makes it 2 r cube. So, r square and r cube they get cancelled and the formula reduces to mu naught i divided by 2 r which I think exactly is the formula which we were using in the previous two problems when we were required to write the magnetic field at the center of the circular wire. Okay. Now, put the values of x and uh, get the magnetic field here that will be mu naught i r square divided by 2 into bracket r square plus see x is given to be root 3 r. So, that makes it 3 r square raised to 3 by 2 and that will be mu naught i divided by 2 into see r square plus 3 r square will be 4 r square raised to 3 by 2 will make it 8 r 1 r gets cancelled 8 r cube sorry. So, r will get cancelled and you will have 8 r. So, mu naught i divided by 2 into 8 r is what you get. Now, he says the magnetic field produced at the center of the circular wire is B. So, you can replace this by uh, B here like this it will be B divided by 8. See mu naught i divided by 2 r is B. So, it happens to be B by 8 and that makes the first option to be correct. You could have discarded the remaining two options because they are more than B. He has given that the magnetic field at the center of the circular wire itself is B. Therefore, the magnetic field on its axis at some distance from the center can never be more than B. Therefore, C and D options could be straight away discarded and we have simplified to understand that A option is correct.